Interfaith marriages? Um, Yay, nay. I was a bit of a fangirl, too, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> before you made that video. And then after that, I was like, what's going on? What's okay. Going on? I wish you had more of a humanist approach as opposed to, you know, straight up, um, you know, red mariada, look at the red. Okay. No, look, fair enough. I understand that. I'm going to be very honest. Okay, I made a couple of videos which said that in, in, a Sikh, in Sikhi, um, there is no interfaith marriage. Like there's no Ananda Karaj. So you, and I'm going to be honest, like people say, oh, why don't you just be a bit more reflexive and relaxed? I honestly, I don't, I'm not, this channel is not my, it's not, I don't plan to make this channel. I just did it because I wanted to get sure that people understand Gurmat. Yeah. So I have no interest in telling anybody what I really think. Yeah. My only interest is that whatever Guruji said, let's just put that on the internet, easily accessible, and let people say, well, this is what Guru says. You can make your own mind up. Rest. So this is not spreading Jagrad Singh's wisdom, right? It's just spreading Guru's mat. So if you want me to be more humanist, that might happen if I'm with my family and my friends, and I might chat to my friends. But when it goes on the YouTube channel, I have absolutely no interest in telling people what I think. I'm just telling people what the, what the Gurbani says and what the Rath Mehrata says. Because as far as I'm, as, as a Sikh, I think that the Sikh is more interested in listening to the Guru, listening to what they think or what the world thinks. The Guru becomes supreme for a Sikh. Now I can explain to you why this is not an ideal thing for a good Sikh. However, I just want to clarify one thing. Any Sikh can do an interfaith marriage, but they can't really do an interfaith Ananda Karaj. Do you get the difference? You can go into the courtroom of Canton, Toronto, you can go downtown, you can sign up and say, I want to have married a person. You can do a court marriage. When you do an Ananda Karaj, it's a specific ceremony, and there's only four ceremonies in Sikhi. Right, I just want to go back to that. Birth, well it's not a birth ceremony, but a naming ceremony, Naamkaran, then there's an, oh, and then there's an, uh, an Amrit, Shakana, Ananda Karaj, and then Jaram, uh, Antim Sanskar, the death. So when you get your name, your death, and the two in between. These two, birth, uh, birth and death, we ain't really part of it, on a personal level, you know. We weren't there when our name was given to us, our parents did it for us, and then when we die, you know, no, we're not even around there at that point, it's done for us. So, the two that we can choose are Amrit and Anand Karaj. The only, the only, you know, difference or the only problem I have with this is that we're not clear with what defines a Sikh. It's not, I'm Amritari, so I will, you know, take part in the Anand Karaj ceremony. It's, I, my parents have sing in their name or I have four in my name though I don't believe in Sikhi or you know theoretically I'm yep. um, or I don't you know take Guru Sahib as my guru whatever whatever but you know what I have core or my last name's Gil or whatever and I'm going to partake in the Anand ceremony that doesn't make any sense to me okay. because there are you know I, I have um, a white friend that takes Sikhi more seriously than a lot of my cousins do and I know for a fact she's going to end up marrying a Gursik. I, I can already sense it, but I know my cousins are atheists, but they have, you know, core in their name and they have whatever last name they have and they're going to get to take part in this ceremony. But she doesn't want to, I, I don't think she's, you know, I don't think it's right to ask of her to go ahead and convert because that's not Sikhi, that's not Ekta, that's not, you know, what, that's not what Guru Nanak Dev Ji came up with. Okay, well, let's, let's address both issues separately if I can, yeah? Yeah. So it's a very, in a very good valid points. You all hear that? Or so the first thing is, if we're dealing with somebody who is into Sikhi, but if they want to get and they want to marry a good Sikh, for example, and then should they have to convert? Why do they have to convert if they want to get an Anandkar is done? Well, because they're taking part in one of the main four ceremonies of Sikhi, and those ceremonies denote a relationship between you and the Guru. Believe, don't get anything wrong. If the girl wanted to go around the guy, then we can say she's devoted to him. But the girl is not going around the guy, is she, Panji? She's going around the Guru. What is she doing every time she comes around the Guru? She's matha taking. She's going around. She's listening to a lav. And the very first lav, I don't know if you've read the lama, but I'm going to go to the very first lav just to give you the answer because that's Guru, right? Guru speaking. You're going around Guru. His words are being sung. 
So the Guru is supreme. This is his court, not my court. I have no right to say anything here that's against my Guru's words. Guru's court. What does he say? Har pehladi lav, parvirti karam didaya balaram jiyo. Bani brahma ved, taram didaho, paap tajaya balaram jiyo. Which taram? Dhrid means to become solid in a taram. What, is, what, what does the word taram mean? Right. Taram didaho, har naam tiyavo. Which naam? So you're getting the name from the Guru, you're getting the Taram from the Guru. Taram Dado Har Pa Har Nam Tiavo Simrit Nam Dadaya Satgur Gurpura Aradho Sabakil Vika Papagavaya Satgur Gurpura. The who is a perfect Satguru for us? Guru Granth Sahib Ji Aradho means to worship. So the very first stage is to worship the Guru and get in his Taram and take Nam and start to be following his path, right? So the person who is bowing down and saying, Maharaj, I accept that, this is what I believe in, yeah, I totally accept that, then why they, why they can't say I'm a core then? Why are they going through a ceremony and then saying I'm not a core? Like it doesn't make any sense to me, like why would they go through... It's like saying that your friend is a Gursik, he wants to take Amrit, his wife uh, is uh, not a Gursik, she's a Gori, and he wants... He wa the Amrit Banjipali said to him, you've got to bring your wife. So he says to his wife, hey, you know what, I want to take Amrit, they won't let me take Amrit without you. You're not a Sikh, but I don't mind. Just come with me to the Amrit Sanchar, you take Amrit with me, and you can come back home and cut your case. Is there anybody here who would accept that? That's okay for her to do? Would you personally accept it? That she just goes and takes Amrit and cuts her case? Yeah. Um, and then going out and drinking alcohol right. and getting wasted okay. beyond belief and so, their lives. So, Depenji, now let's de deal with the second issue. So, you understand where I'm coming with the first issue, right? Yeah. The first issue you understand. If, she's, if she believes in Guru Sahib, she wants to matha take, she wants to go around Guru Granth Sahib Ji, then, then either you have to accept a Guru or not. There's a story of a Sikh, let me just for the first issue for a second. There's a story of a Sikh, the Sikhs might know this better because I haven't got a cunt, but there's a story of a guy called Pai Manjaji. Have you heard of him? He's a very famous Guru Sikh of Guru Ajahn Deji Pasha, by Manjji. His Sakhi is very beautiful. He was a follower of someone called Sakhi Sarvat. He came to Guru Sahib, he said, I want to be a Sikh. Guru Sahib says, but you follow Sakhi Sarvat already. You can't be a Sikh. He wanted to take Charanam. His mother said, no, you follow someone already. He said, Maharaj, I'll give it up. I'll give up Sakhi Sarvat, I want to follow you. Mara says, it's going to be hard for you to give up Sakhi Sarvat. Your whole family follows him. Your whole village follows him. You are the head of that village. You'll be an outcast. Are you sure you want that? He says, yes Maharaj, I'll follow you. He, he took Charan Amrit, became a Sikh. After that time, he faced a lot of hardships. I'm, I'm not going to go into depth of it. It was really hard for him. His family was destitute. He was destitute. He suffered so much. At the end of it, Maharaj Kirpa, his life became better. But he went through a very hard cost, a test. And the thing is, to become a Sikh, there should be a test. It shouldn't be like easy to become a Sikh. It should be like, you know what, this is something important. You're taking on the Guru as your Guru. You've got to give up something for this. You've got to give up alcohol. You've got to give up drugs. You've got to believe in your Guru. So I don't think it's hard to say to somebody, listen, this is the relationship. This is the test for Amrit. This is the test for Ananda Karaj. You've got to be a Sikh to have Ananda Karaj. And you've got to be Amrita, you've got to be prepared to have the Panch Kakar for the rest of your life if you want to be Amritari. Now, let's deal with the other issue of all the people that aren't really into Sikhi that get married, right? The hypocritical side. That's why I agree with you there. Here's the problem, right? Even if there's a whole bunch of people that take, that go through the Ananda Karaj who are not really following Sikhi, that doesn't mean we increase the amount of Pagan. If you've got one wrong, you don't have another wrong. You don't just give up and say, Chalo, let's just leave it and let's just go crazy. Everybody could do it in the college. Muslims get Muslims to come and do it in the college. Hindus come and do it in the college. If they want to make it cheaper, let's just get anybody to do it in the college. There's no difference. What we do is we say, okay, we've got a problem here where people are getting married, they don't understand Sikhi. They don't follow Sikhi. So why don't we deal with that problem separately? Let's deal with that problem. Here's what I would suggest on a personal view. 
what we can do to make sure that that doesn't happen in Gurdwara. I would say, let's have a test. Whoever signs up to an Ankaraj, they have a pledge that they fulfill. They say, I am a Sikh. I believe in the basic principles of Fiqh. And I will try and make sure that myself and my family and my kids that are going to come after the marriage, they also follow these basic principles of Sikhi. Right? We made a course called the Waiguru course. Yeah? The Waiguru course. The last week of the Waiguru course, it was 13 weeks long. One was the intro week, it was 12 weeks long. Then on the side was the week one is intro, there's 13 weeks, 12 weeks, and at the end of it we said, let's make another week up. What was that week? Ananda College. We decided, let's make this into a wedding course. It's got the basic history of Sikhi, basic philosophies in there. Why don't we make this into a wedding course? So now, the things that are going to take over this Gurdwara, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, hopefully, Maaz Kirpa Kare, on the 1st of August, the SYF who are just a camp, they're going to take over this Gurdwara and start running it. Now, they, what we had a meeting this morning about it, and we were saying, I was saying, look, why don't you bring that course here? That's their own idea, they want to bring it here. And have it every four months. Have the course. It's 14 weeks long, so it's just over three and a half months. Have it every four months. And then anybody who signs up to get married in the Gurdwara, say to them, you've got to do this course. So you get this certificate saying, I went on the course. I filled the pledge out. I'm a Sikh. Then you can do another college. If you can't fulfill those basic requirements, then you can't do another college. What's wrong with that? If many churches, they say, you've got to go on a course. This is how other people dealt with it. They made up a solution with that problem. They didn't just give up and say, well, let's... Just give up. I agree there's hypocrisy, but let's reduce the hypocrisy, not increase it. So I, unfortunately, Panji, we have to look at what Guru Sahib is talking about. What is Anandkar? Let's just deal with the whole thing now in, in a general way. What is marriage? Is marriage between two people who love each other and then that's it? Is that what marriage is? Union. Union of two souls, right? But also it's families as well, isn't it? And it's Guru Sahib involved. So you know what? Imagine... I gave this a video, I don't know if it's up, I don't think it's up. You know, we're so backwards in the videos, we've got so, such a big backlog. So there was a video about Ananda College, right? I don't know if it's up there yet. So imagine the sun is shining down and there's a pool. In the pool, there's two lotuses. Guru Sahib says, Ki Reman Aisi Preet Kar, Har Shio Preet Kar, Jaisi Jal Kamale. On my mind, love why Guru like the water and the um, lotus. The lotus has some special qualities, right? We're supposed to be like a lotus, right? Lotus is always looking up. The cool thing about lotus is it never goes upside down. It always looks up. It's always chardika. Yeah? And no matter how much the waves come, it always rises above. It stays on top. It doesn't float away. In the same way in our life, we're like a lotus. The waves of marriage and pange and fights, all those happen where we stay facing upwards. Towards whom? Towards the sun. So there's a triangle. Sun and two lotuses. And what the beautiful thing about this triangle is, as both lotuses go towards the sun, they come closer together. That's the key for us. They both people are marrying the Guru. And they're both committing to live this life as per Guru's four conditions. First, come into morality, uh, uh, Guru's Rehat, start to live a Taram, right? Sek and leave Paap and things that Guru Sahib doesn't recommend, do the good stuff. Start to worship Guru. Second stage, Gyan, spiritual wisdom, meditate, feel that fear of God. And within you, you purify yourself to the point where you start to hear anant music, Anhat Shabbat. The third stage is all about Bairag. Start to realize the world is a dream and start to have that love with Wahi Guru. The third stage is all about love. And the fourth stage is you get to that Avasta of Sej Avasta, where you become one with Wahi Guru and there's no up or down. That's, a, that's what we commit to. But Maharaj, this is my spiritual path. I commit to it, me and this partner together, we want to walk about a spiritual path. So if you've got two people, humanistically they can live together, but if one is not aiming towards Sahaj Avastha, becoming one with Guru, she won't understand why this person in life will be unaffected by things. You know, I've seen people, they say, Ito Mariawaya. Got no feeling. Bad things happen to him, he doesn't cry. Great things happen, he's not extremely happy and joyous. You can't say that about a good sick, because a good sick is like, that's actually my mission. <laughs> you know? Who doesn't go up and down, that's my mission, Sajavasta. But somebody else is going to be like, he's not right, he's weird. So, unless we have the same spiritual path 
as we go spiritually, there's going to be a conflict. Right? There's that problem. And marriage is not just a marriage between two people, it's also the families and society around you. I know a girl who got married to a Muslim guy, very young. Now she bitterly regrets it. Before she was like all Bollywood, she was from a Sikh family, married a Muslim guy. What happened to her, not unfortunately, great lucky for her, she suddenly found Guruji. She watches our videos a lot, it's a big fan. She started to follow Sikhi. Now she regrets what she did when she was 18. But what was she fooled by? What was in her head when she was 18? Bollywood, right? Bollywood was in her head. She was like, oh, I'm the heroine, he's the hero, blah, blah, blah. And it's, what do they say in Hollywood? The family's always against, and you've got to fight. You've got to fight the family, the drama, and finally love conquers all, right? So she's fooled by this. She thinks it's great, I'm doing a great thing. Bollywood will make you think that you're being really amazing by marrying out your faith. You're being rebellious, great, you're breaking these taboos down. But the reality comes home, right? When she's trying to wake up morning to a nickname, and the family is saying, well, we've got to go to the mosque. Then where did she go? Gurdwara or mosque? See what I mean? So it isn't as simple as that. Guru Sahib has given us a way, and what they say about women, and Guru Sahib's 20 to 52 hukums, they say, to the Singhs, they say, marry your daughter into a house where there is Guru Sahib Sikhi is ready, there's Sikhi there, and there's no debts. Because you know when you've got debts, they might, do, they might push the girl to go out and do all sorts of crazy work just to pay off that debt. Because it's not her, they didn't bring her up. You know, that's what the so Mara says, where the Sikhi is there, everybody keeps their cash and there's no debt. So that's sensible advice to, from a father to his son to say, listen, your daughter, my granddaughter, put her into a, a nice house and look after her. So I think personally the Guru is giving us great advice. Right? And if we follow that advice, our life will be better. It will be easier. But Bollywood can intervene. We can start falling in love. And we start thinking it's okay. I had a guy come up to me yesterday, well, day before yesterday at the camp. He's like, Baji, what do you think about interfaith marriages? I was like, well, there's about three videos about that already. And I think that this inadvisable, if you're going to do it, you can't do it in college. He goes, well, I started to go out with this girl before I was into Sikhi. And she's a Hindu. Because now she loves me and I love her. And what do I do? And I was like, well, you've got to cope with your mistake. You didn't get Sikhi when you were younger. Now you've made this mistake. If you break up with her, you'll break her heart. And that's not good either. She might be a nice person. But does she accept your Sikhi? And he was like, yeah, she does. I was like, well, then you've got to make a choice. Can you live without having an Ankaraj? Or does she, is she prepared to leave the Devi Devte Puja and just come and accept Guru Granth Sahib Ji? Because she can still follow Naam Dev Ji. She can still follow Kabir Ji. She can still follow you know, the famous saints of India. But she doesn't have to go to Mandir and do Murti Puja. Is she able to accept that? He was like, well, I've talked to her. I said, well, talk to her. And this is what happened with Baljeet Singh, for example. The other Kathawa that sits with me. So he got into Sikhi, but then his wife got into Sikhi and she was a Hindu. She's taken Amrit, he took Amrit. Her sister took Amrit and she's, got, she's going to get married to one of our friends. So it's not like people can't get into Sikhi. You're not forcing them to get a religion. For me personally, if someone's a Muslim or a Christian, it's different. But if someone's a Hindu, then for them to take on Sikhi, it's not a big change. And you might think that's a bit weird. I'll explain to you why I think that it's not weird for a Hindu to take on Guru Sahib as their Guru. You know Guru Amar Dasi? When he was Pai Amruji, you heard the story? He was going up to the, uh, he was going up to the mountains and doing things like, he was going to uh, Ganga to do Yatra every year, right? Twice a year. So what happens? They're coming back from the Yatra and he's sitting with Sanyasi. The sannyasi is nowadays called a Hindu. In those days, Guru Amar Das would be called a Hindu. Then they're sharing a meal, and the, the sannyasi says to Guru Amar Das, "What are you? Who is your guru?" He goes, "I haven't got a guru actually." He goes, "What? You haven't got a guru?" He goes, "Hi, hi, I galti karti. I sat with a niguria. I sat, I ate food with a niguria. He goes, "I have to go back to Tirat now and wash again. I ate food with a niguria, but that paap kar gaya." He was so hurt. Why Amr Dasi was so hurt that why am I not even good enough for someone to eat food with me? Then he went away looking for a guru. And guess who he found? 
Guru Angad Dev Ji. Most Hindus are just Indians who haven't got a Guru. They don't have a Guru. They go to Mandirs, they go to Tirath, but there's no one to guide them what they should and they shouldn't do. There's no one that they submit their ego to. So they're Nigure, just like Guru Pai Amardashi was. That's two Hindus there. One cussing another Hindu, saying, You are Nigure. So most Hindus nowadays are Nigure. It might be a strange thing, I know it goes against conventional wisdom because they're like, respect everybody. But trust me, right now, the Indians, they need to find a Guru because they haven't got a Guru. They think they've got a Guru, but it's just a stone. And it's not a Guru. You need someone to guide you in life. And Guru Sahib says, you need a Guru or you won't get anything. Let's go on, Benji. What were you going to say? Sorry, I don't want to make this about me and my concern. No, no, it's okay. Last, uh, comment. It's fine. I just, I wonder how many, um, or if, um, and what Guru would walk up to Bhagat Parinji and say, you cannot have an Anandgaraj. Because, I mean, he was a Muslim, right? Right. From what, what I understand at least. Yeah, that's right. And he, I think all of them would. Words, Yeah. And he was a divine individual, and I don't think Guru Sahib would stop him from engaging in the Nan Kharaj um, with any core. Um, okay, here's his. Are you sure? Can I, I give you an example? Well, from my understanding. Can I give you an example? Yes. So I just gave you the example earlier. You know, yeah. Pai Manjji came to take Amrit. Mara said, No. He said, You know, I'm, you can't. You follow Saki Sarva. You can't take Amrit from me and go back and follow Saki Sarva. You've got to choose. Just a perfect example. Mara said no. When uh, Pai Mardana Ji said, I want to go to Makkah, Mara said yes, isn't it? He said, let's go to Makkah, we we'll go together. Pai Mardana Ji, Gunan Dev Ji. But do you think that Gunan Dev Ji would say to every one of his six, let's all go to Makkah? No. When Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji put the shield up for their friend who fought against them, and they killed their own friend who did two vars. Then Maharaj did one var back and killed him. Maharaj put the shield up, shielded him from the sun. And they said, Say your kalma. Say your kalma. They're saying, Stay in your faith. Read your kalma. They didn't say, Quick, take Amrit. So I don't think Guruji would tell people to break their faith. And nor would the Guruji say then to a Sikh, break your faith. So I don't think that, you know, my wife just actually made a video this morning about multiculturalism. I don't know if you've seen it. Because she's like Gori, right? She's really annoyed because she got told off in a Gurdwara for speaking Punjabi. In Singapore, they were like, you can't speak Punjabi in a Gurdwara. We want to be multicultural. And outside the Gurdwara, and Gurdwara property is rented out to a Chinese nursery. And the Chinese nursery on the outside says, Chinese language, Chinese calligraphy, tea appreciation. So multiculturalism means that every single tree in this forest has equal height. And then we are all equal. Monoculturalism means there's just one culture. We respect everybody, but then we get everybody can follow their faith. And we follow our faith. We follow our faith, you follow your faith, and we're friends. Doesn't mean I break my faith to follow your faith to make sure you're not hurt. But you can't go to a mosque and do a nikah if you're not a Muslim. Try it. Say I want to marry a Muslim. Walk up to a mosque, ask, ask them. Say, in theory, if I wanted to marry a Muslim guy in the mosque and do a nikah, is it okay if I don't believe in Prophet Muhammad? They will say, no, it's not okay. Sorry, it's not okay. So why are six so keen to make us break the Guru's rules for the sake of openness when they don't go around protesting outside mosques to say you should break your rules. If we follow our rules and they follow their rules and we respect each other, so Sheikh Free is in Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. But you know what Panji? And it's one thing to understand. Sheikh Free Ji does not come at the beginning of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. In any rag, Sheikh Free Ji does not come first. First comes Guru Nanak Dev Ji. There's 31 rags in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. In every rag, first is Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Sabate Vadda Sat Guru Nanak Jinikal Rakhi Me. Then comes Guru Angad Dev Ji. Then comes Guru Amar Das Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji, Guru Ajande Ji Pasha, Guru Teg Bahadur Ji. And then come Pagat Kabir Ji. And then come the rest of the Pagats. 
They all and the parts come at the end. They all in an order. And who's the highest? Guru Nanak Dev Ji. We have no, no Sikh should be in any doubt about this. The Guru, Satguru is totally divine. Puran Avtar of Vaheguru. Directly Avtar of Vaheguru. The Pagats, they've got respect. We respect them. We touch their feet. We matha take to their bani. But they are not the same as Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. They're not the same. Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj is Supreme Akal Puruk's own Avtar upon earth. So we can't break his rules just to please somebody else. And no, Maharaj would never let a Muslim marry a Sikh. Never. It's not happened in history. If you can show me that in the history of Sikhi from 1469 up to 1708, if ever Guru Maharaj and Maharaj carried out loads of marriages, if Maharaj ever allowed a Sikh to marry a Muslim, just show me anywhere if it happened. An example from history, when Akali Fula Singh Ji, who was a Jahidar of Akal Takht, a very respected Guru Sikh, when he heard that Raja Ranji Singh had married a Muslim girl who was, a, who was Mora, he ordered him to be whipped. It's against the Sikh Taram to marry a Muslim girl. He married a Muslim girl and he was ordered to come to Akal Takht. He refused. They said, don't speak to him again. Do not speak to Ranjit Singh at all. The next morning Ranjit Singh gets up, goes to ride his horse. The guy at the door doesn't speak to him, the Singh. He goes to get his horse, the horse guy doesn't talk to him. No one in his kingdom is talking to him. He goes, I can't rule a kingdom like this, no one speaks to me. He goes in front of a Kali Fula Singh, ke mafi mangnavaste, ki sorry I should listen to you. And he was ordered to be whipped. You know what he did? There was a pole like this, he put his arms, took his shirt off, put his arms around it and was ready to be whipped for marrying a Muslim. And that was only a hundred years after Guru Gobind Singh Ji or less. Guru Gobind Singh left in 1708. This is in 1804 or 5. This is what happens. So I don't know whether you feel this is what my Guru would do or you would say, actually, no, my Guru says, no, that's not possible. Because I think the Guru is keen to make the Sikhi tree as big as any other tree in that forest and strong. And it's not going to become strong with kids that don't understand what they are. Hindu or Muslim, Sikh or Hindu. They don't know what they are. It's going to become strong with them learning Sikhi at a young age. You know, see these little kids here? At four or five years old, if they learn Japji Sahib, at ten years old, they could do the Granthi Seva. I've been to Nihang Singh Dals, where you know the guy that does a Katha? Next to him is like an eleven-year-old kid who's reading the part from Suzy Prakash Granth. Eleven-year-old kids are reading the part, they already got their Baniya Kant. How will that happen if they grow up confused? Maharaj wants Guru Sikhs that are strong. Yeah? So they can do the things that Baba Ajit Singh Ji did when he was 14 years old. He was leading mash missions. He was fighting against the enemy. Guru Teg Maharaj Ji was chopping people into half when he was 13 years old as a soldier in Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji's army. That's why he got the name Guru Teg Bahadur. Teg Bahadur. Brave with a sword. You can't get that with kids that are confused. So Guru Sahib wants us to be strong in Sikhi. We respect other people. We don't break our own souls. We don't break them. And they just have to accept that. If there's something about your Guru you don't want to accept, uh, it's not for me. I don't, I'm not interested in telling people what I think. I personally don't care what I think. I personally just care about what the Guru thinks. Oh, it's okay. Guru ki matu le eane, pagat bena bordu besane. Just follow Guru, that'll be good enough for me.